And here we go into a new computer animation tutorial utilizing the Wick editor. And so what we're going to get into today is kind of making just like a background where we use some of the drawing tools in the Wick editor and then add kind of like your logo or kind of your name uh, going across the stage and just kind of like flying by. And so we're going to get to know the drawing tools and get to know how to make a tween in um, the Wick editor. And so Let's go ahead and get started. I'll go ahead and go with you. You would go to new tab and open up Chrome. Uh, we'll just type in a search for the Wic editor and you could, or you could go to wiceditor.com. We'll click the link here. Opens up to this page where you have some info and tutorials and stuff with about the Wic editor. We'll click on launch editor here and go ahead and try it. Asking me if I want to load the auto save, so nice feature uh, if you happen to have been working on a project and uh, it auto saves, so it, it recognized that I had a project open that um, I might want to save or continue working on, um, but that's okay. I'm all good with that. I already saved my stuff, so let's go ahead and get into this. So you got your toolbar up top. You got some other controls for your uh, canvas and stuff like that there and then you got a timeline down here and so that's pretty much the general layout we'll go ahead and just start making this background here um, use the brush tool and you can set your color over here uh, stroke color and then you have your size and smoothness here is what these are and if you put your uh, mouse over it, it tells you what the tools do which is nice so I'm just gonna go ahead and start by kind of making like some wavy lines that are gonna to point to kind of like the area where my logo is gonna go. So you don't have to do it going into the same corner. You could have yours go anywhere if you wanna do it in the center or side, other ways. But yeah, just making a couple lines here with the brush tool. Um, then what you can also do is uh, with your lines, if you wanna change them up, you can click on the cursor tool and then click on your line. You could go ahead and like resize your lines if you wanna make smaller or wider. Um, you could also rotate them and kind of twist them around if you want to. Um, you could also Command uh, C and Command V to copy and paste things, uh, just like you might in Word or Google Docs or something like that. Um, Command Z will also undo, and so those are probably with your Control key if you're on Chromebook. Um, but otherwise, so yeah, let's make just a couple lines with the brush tool like that. Um, we'll go ahead and actually do a couple lines now with the pencil tool. So pencil tool, very similar. Um, again, color, uh, weight is right here. And then we'll just make that like five. That's probably always gonna be like a good weight for a pencil line. And just make another couple of wavy lines. Um, I'm gonna point out the difference between the pencil lines and uh, the brush lines in a little bit. But for now, we'll just make a few lines and then um, yeah, again, trying to kind of lead your eye to where my logo will go. I don't really like those last two lines, so I'm just going to Command-Z, Command-Z. Anyways, uh, eraser tool is the next tool up. Um, you know, make some of these, erase some of these lines. We could break them into sm smaller dotted lines. Kind of makes for interesting design. Um, you can change your eraser size up here, too. Um, yeah. So uh, also a rectangle tool, uh, you can change the, uh, the width of the line on your outside edges of your rectangle tool. You can change the colors here um, and you can give it roundness. So maybe I'll just throw in a couple of rectangles out here. You can draw outside of the edge of your stage too. Um, anything out there won't appear in your animation, but um, you can draw it there as well. So yeah, just can throw a couple of kind of overlapping rectangles in here. Um, maybe I'll change the color on a couple. Again, your background here can kind of be anything that you want it to be. It does not have to be just like mine. You could do it any which way. And so yeah, just uh, kind of draw a couple of squares, rectangles, give them a couple shapes in here. Just kind of making a little background, um, you know, and then move over to maybe my ellipse tool. So with my ellipse tool, you can add some circles. Maybe I'll do like a circle down here. Um, if you hold the shift key when you're making circles, it will keep the proportions so that make a good circle. Um, if you don't, 
then you make a oval or an ellipse. And so we can drop a couple of those shapes out here too. Um, next tool up is the line tool. Uh, line tool works a lot like the pencil tool, except just makes pretty much straight lines. But we can also uh, curve those later. So if you click and drag, you can make a line like that. If you click again and then drag, you can continue kind of drawing from the same line. So I'll just make a couple of zigzags over here. And that looks pretty good. So the next tool I wanted to show you is the path cursor. So this is where you can really kind of discover the differences with your type self lines. Um, so when you put your path cursor over one of your lines, you can take and you can bend and curve that line, which is a really handy tool, a, hand, a handy feature to be able to do. And so this is gonna be really uh, a nice thing to be able to do with your lines. And then when you go over your brush lines though, you'll notice something else happens. So a brush works more like a filled shape. Um, and so those are just gonna kinda like stretch and expand and can be kinda cool, but not really the same way that you're expecting like the pencil line to move, right? So if I go back over like a pencil line over here, that works just like what the line with the line tool works. So I can make these lines curve and do some kind of fun stuff like that with these. Um, you can also use this uh, path shape tool on your shapes as well. So like your rectangles, you can grab and curve these lines and bend them and play with them and stuff like that too. Um, all right, so that pretty much does it for making our background at least. Um, what we can also do is if you want to just fill this whole background color, you can hit the gear up in the corner. We can choose a background color from here. Maybe I'll make it like a, I don't know, light tannish orange kind of color. And we can also name our project here. So we'll call this Wick Draw. Wick Draw, John Wick Draw. Uh, we could also set the size and the frame rate of these animations. Um, so 12 frames per second is really the lowest you'll want to go. We may go higher for some things, but we can hit apply and you can see that changed the background color and I'll X out of this real quick. And Wickdraw is now the name of this file. So you can see what the name of your file is. Background color changed. All right, so we're next ready for the next part. We're gonna make our kind of like name or title kind of sweep by here and for that, we're going to add in a new layer. Anytime you make something kind of move on a, um, a tween, which is what we're going to add, you need to add it on its own layer. All right, so I'll have a second layer there. For this first layer, um, let's actually expand this frame. So this is the frame that all our drawing is on. So if we want it to take up more than just one frame, we would need to click and drag it out here. We'll give it 20 frames of animation. So. 20 frames is a second, or 12 frames is a second. So 20 frames is a little over a second. But we don't see anything happen yet because we haven't added any movement. So we were gonna do that with some text. And so let's click on this uh, first frame of your second layer here, and we'll go choose the text tool. And I'll just click anywhere out here. I'm gonna type my name, my initials, your initials, your could be your last name, your first initial, anything like that that you want to do. Um, once I'm good with that, I'll just click outside here. Uh, as you can tell, I do want to change the color of that font. So if I take my cursor tool and then select this uh, text box here, I can go ahead and I get some options on the side. So I can change the fill color to black and we can change the font type right here. So font family right here. We can go and scroll through. Got lots of fonts in here. Just gonna choose something random. It says it imported the font, which is good. And then I can just kind of take this and expand it, make it the size that I feel like I want to fill this space. And then I was gonna add a second box too. And that's kind of, uh, cool looking how it goes behind it. I hadn't done that with my first one. Oops, Command Z. Um, because I have this layer underneath the drawing layer. So I can change that later if I want, but I might leave it for now. It looks kind of cool. And then um, I do also want to add one more text box that is going to say animation. So, because that's kind of what this is for. And I'm just typing in all caps because I kind of like the look. Um, but 
don't have to. And so I want to go back to my cursor tool. Again, it made it that green color. No good. So let's change that up to black again. And maybe change my font type one more time. Just for fun. That's nice. It gave you the one that you'd used before. It gave me that as my top option. So that was nice to see. I'm just going to stretch this so that it, whoops. I just wanted to make it about the same width as the my last name part all right so I can stretch this so that it's a little bit bigger so that yeah they line up pretty good so I may want this to be on top actually and so um, that way it's in front of the shapes but you can mess around with that play around with your layers if you want have them in a different order so I'm gonna stretch this frame also to expand um, so it's the same amount of frames, so 20 frames long. And so with this layer selected, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Add Tween button. All right. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to take this uh, text as it's got this blue box around it now. So now it's a clip that I can take and I can move on a, on a pathway. So if I want it to start maybe over here off the left side, I would just click and drag it over there with my cursor tool. And then if I want it to maybe on the 12th frame, so one second into my animation, I want it to be over here, I would just click and drag that over to this corner. I don't want it to be too close to the corner there, but maybe I'll just move it to this open space right here. So it'll kind of move diagonally. It'll take that and move that clip from one spot to the next. And then I go to the end frame here and just click and drag. And maybe I want this to go off the top here. And so now it would connect those two together as well. So it kind of makes my name or logo slide across and then off, up and off. And we could test play or preview play in the corner here and see what our animation looks like. And see if you want to make any adjustments. You can always click on this spot and if maybe I want this spot to be over here somewhere I can just move it over there and it will change the tween to go with that and so yeah so that's pretty much it um, I think I didn't quite mention like the zoom options here but you got some zoom tools if you want to ever zoom out zoom in um, you can recenter so that kind of centers you up good if you end up zooming in really far um, but yeah, this is pretty good. Um, I think I kind of liked the spot maybe over here where I had it before better. And so uh, now that this is all good to go, I want to make sure I save it and export it. And so let's go talk about that really quick. So if I hit save here, um, it's going to save a WIC, a .WIC file to my downloads. And so that will be really handy in the future. Um, if you have a project where you're not quite finished, you want to save it. And open it later um, that's what you're going to want to do but if your project is in fact done you want to export and so we can choose to change the name we want to choose animated gif and we'll say export gif or gif whatever you want to call it but that looks good so that is all saved and you always want to do both we want to always save both of these just in case you ever want to come back and make changes, you have the .wic file. So always keep that in your drive. All right, so if I have Classroom already open, I can go ahead to get to my drive right through the waffle here. Go to my animation folder and make sure that both of those get dropped in to my animation folder. So let's see here, too many folders. Animation, where are you? There we are. Cool. And you might want to make a new folder in here for WIC editor files if you so you don't get them confused with your flip anim ones. Um, new folder button right here. And then you could just click and drag these in. So I can click and drag them right from here, right into this folder. Bada boom, bada bing. And I can also preview them in here too. So if I double click on this give me a nice preview of my animation. So there we go. And then it's good to submit in Google Classroom. Um, if you don't see these linked down here, you can always just go to new and file upload as well. 
and you should be able to then find your downloads folder on your computer and click open once you choose those files as well. So, all right, that's it. So make sure you submit them in Classroom, and I hope you guys uh, have fun with this little assignment and, uh, you know, get creative with creating your own little logo animation for your animation splash.